Everybody, welcome back to another episode of FSI DFS Fantasy Baseball Picks. I'm your host, Meg Roller 31 Got another monster slate here, 13 games starting around uh, 7 p.m. So there's two like earlier games started at like 5.10. But we have almost everybody playing here. We've got really good pitching. We've got some great hitting things. Um, it's hot, lots of places. I'm currently, I am. It's like 90 degrees. So I have the fan off so I can do this video. So I'm going to fly through this so I don't like sweat to death. So uh, let's see here. First up, we have St. Louis Cardinals and Pittsburgh Pirates. Um, they're also in Pennsylvania like I am. It's 90 degrees there, so it's going to be great hitting weather, even in a park that's not usually hitter friendly. I think that's really going to help the wind blowing out a little bit, too. So I think Cardinals are in a great spot here against Contreras. And uh, Flaherty on the other side is not a great pitcher either. So Pittsburgh, I think, uh, makes sense if you're looking for some cheap guys besides Reynolds to throw in to a stack. So love Cardinals, probably my favorite stack on the slate here. We'll have to see if Newt Barr is in leading off. Um, still dealing with his injury. Jordan Walker was called back up. So uh, he is minimum price on FanDuel and pretty cheap. I think he's like 3-3 on DK. So there's another option for your stack if you can't get all these guys in, if you're trying to get um, decent pitching in. Next game we have is Philadelphia Phillies and the Washington Nationals, Zach Wheeler and Josiah Gray. I think Zach Wheeler is an absolute steal on DraftKings. Should be a 10K pitcher. I know Washington only has like a 19% strikeout rate against right-handed hitting, but uh, Wheeler, I think, can manufacture some more from that. But I think he's definitely will get the win. I think he will go into the game and um, do really well. He's only $100 off of Otani on um, – FanDuel, so they're the choice a little bit uh, different, but here just being 92 and just saving almost um, $1,000 off of some of the top pitchers who are in uh, harder matchups, I, I really like Weaver here, even though the Nationals don't strike out a ton. So Nationals would be a top leverage stack in Philly. I think it's my second favorite stack on the slate against a struggling Josiah Gray and uh, Washington bullpen that isn't great. And again, it's going to be 88 degrees in our national capital for that game. Toronto Blue Jays and New York Mets might be some thunderstorms here, about 30% chance, so nothing major. I think the game will be fine. Chris Bassett, who's been phenomenal and bad, and then phenomenal and bad, and phenomenal and bad. Have to figure out which wave. But the Mets hitting has been phenomenal and bad, phenomenal and bad. So which is going to sync up tonight? Um, we'll have to see on that one. So I think Bassett's definitely been playing the medium mid range here. I like Verlander for about $500 more. Seems like he's been very strong coming back. Uh, Blue Jays just have a great offense and usually hit right-handed pitching pretty well, but um, you know, Brandon Belt's going to be up in the fourth spot here uh, probably. And it's just some of the guys down towards the bottom aren't, um, as good in this lineup the top is definitely elite so uh, verlander is a little bit risky in the matchup but i think he'll be uh, perfectly fine here if um you want to use him as one of choices but you have 26 pitchers to choose from on a 13 game slate so lots of options there bat wise um I think Toronto will be leverage if you, or Verlander picks up some ownership. And uh, the Mets, I think just the GPP, if Bassett is off, um, they should be decent. Uh, but, you know, there's probably, they'd probably make the top 12 here, but they're nothing to be a priority tonight. Weather concern game is going to be in Boston with 60 to 70% chance of rain here, wind blowing in. Uh, Tyler Glasnow and Whitlock. If the game plays, I think Glasnow is probably one of the best SP2 options here at 79 even though the Red Sox are left-handed heavy. Uh, he's been decent this season. If um, the wind continuing to blow in, but the weather's fine and it doesn't look like there's going to be a delay or cancellation, then I think he's definitely in play. Uh, Whitlock, is, uh, he's been like bouncing around, I believe, between like the bullpen and, and a starter. So, and, and they lost Chris Sale yesterday, so I mean, they got to figure out some things for this um, lineup. Which is sad because Sale's doing really well. I think like he was finally back, and now he's got to go on MRI for the same, I think, shoulder or arm injury that he's continuously had. So hopefully that's not the end of him for a while again. Maybe hopefully it's just something minor and rest a little bit, and he'll be back. Um, Whitlock, again, I'm not really excited about here, but I, both these teams I put in the 150 max. If you're multi-entering, just because of the weather, I, I just really can't um, see what's going to happen. They've got a double header scheduled for tomorrow, so you know could they potentially have two double headers in a row? 
I don't know. I don't know if Tampa Bay comes back to Boston this season, but it is a divisional matchup, so I'll have to get in at some point, so we'll have to see what happens with this. They'll probably try to play it, but I just think that would be such a messy game that I don't really see. It only has a nine total, so again, I think I'm just going to kind of cross this off. If the weather is better, I think there's a lot of potential here, but I'm going moving on. Seattle and Texas, uh, Castillo and Gray, you've got two pretty good pitchers here against two offenses that um can also be hit or miss so uh castillo i think i like at the bottom of the top guys but gray i think is um a great place at seven six here seattle has not been great on the road and there have been some times where they really just haven't hit all together he's been good against right-handed um so clinic is the only one to really worry about maybe raleigh as a switch hitter so uh they called up like mike ford you know, he was decent hitting righties as a Yankee, but I just don't know if um they don't really scare me here. So I, I think Gray makes an excellent choice, you know, if you're not going with Glass now and if you don't trust Waka as an SP2 here at um, 7.6. And I think, you know, it's in a GPP, I think he's like 9K on FanDuel. Um, I think he's the lowest I'd go as a starting pitcher. Uh, bat wise, I think both of them, same thing as Tampa Bay and Boston. I think you have two good pitchers here. You only have an eight total. I think if you want to, if you're playing 150 max, they're perfectly fine to play these teams, stack them. I would not take one offs. Um, you know, I just go four or five person stacks just in case the pitcher has an off night. But if not, then, um, you know, kind of right off. If you're playing 20 maxes, don't even consider these teams tonight for pit for batting. Los Angeles Angels and Houston Astros. This should be a great pitching duel here in a dome. Uh, only a 7.5 total here, so probably one of the lowest ones on the slate. You have Shohei Itani and Framer Valdez. Itani is probably the top pitcher on the slate here um, at, at 10 7 against an Astros team that strikes out a little bit more this season. They're not as good as they've been in years past, even though they've got some of the pieces back. Looks like Altuve will be back in the lineup. Uh, but they still have some strikeouts down towards the bottom. So I think Otani will could potentially have another masterful performance here. And Valdez on the other side, the Angels have been hitting well recently also. But again, Valdez has been a decent pitcher on the other side. So I think both pitchers are in play here if you want to pay up for them. Uh and then I just think both these uh, bat stacks would be leverage stacks because these pitchers will probably be highly owned. And then if you stack against them and they do struggle, then you'll definitely have some leverage on the field. Another slate weather concern here in Cleveland uh, with Cleveland and Minnesota games in Minnesota. Yes, the Valley coming off of the IL against Ober. Valley was doing really well until he went on to the IL. His uh, rehab starts were okay, but this Twins lineup is probably losing like three starters tonight with injuries. It looks like Kreev, Planner Fasciasis is flaring up again. Um, Buxton got hit by a pitch and might be out a couple days and got hit in like the rib cage. And then I um, forget who the other one was that could potentially be out, but it's, it's three guys that. Um, you know, they're missing here. So Royce Lewis, you know, has been hitting really well. I put him on the cover a couple of days ago. Um, you know, probably move up to like the third spot. Plant goes back leading off. So, but this is not a great lineup. So there's two things with Minnesota. They're going to be dirt cheap here against a pitcher that's coming back. So potentially they could be in play for that. But um, like Sivali, I might take some chances on him because if the Twins are like going to be completely watered down, then he might at 8K, you know, again, this is just a GPP thing. This is not a, in check the weather too, not a cash play, but I do have some interest in Savali. Olber on the other side too, like I've seen him do really well this season. Like the last couple starts haven't been great, but this Cleveland team doesn't really hit many home runs. They don't strike out a lot either, but again, he might be able to have a good, um, he's favored in this, even with the watered down lineup. So I think both pitchers are potentially in play here. The bat-wise, um, Cleveland I'm not interested in at all. Minnesota's bullpen's been okay. Um, so even if Ober struggles, I don't see them putting up a ton of runs. And like I said, Minnesota um, bat-wise are, are pretty cheap, and I uh, might be able to take advantage of the situation there. But um, lots of options on the slate. Speaking of cheap, we have the Colorado Rockies and the Kansas City Royals here, Chase Anderson and Jordan Lyles. Anderson's pitched well recently but some regression is definitely coming kansas city 
uh, 82 degrees here, decent hitting weather. And then Jordan Lyles has just been terrible. So the Rockies, I think, you know, I liked them in the cheap aspect here because they lost Bryant. So that means like either probably Doyle or Jones will get some more uh, playing time. They're both decent young outfielders with a lot of potential, or maybe Grichik will move up to that spot. So there's really nobody here that Blackman should be back from bereavement. So I think Diaz is their most expensive batter here at 5K here, and Charlie and McMahon at 4-6, but everybody else is definitely reasonable price if you want to attack Lyles. But I really like Kansas City on the other side here, going against Chase Anderson. Prado will probably lead off. He's 3K. Pescotino at 3-6 is decent. Um, Prez a little expensive at 5-2. Witt at 5-5. Melendez at 3-3, like that too. Massey, Garcia, I play a lot of him at 2-4. He's an up-and-coming guy. So <clears throat> lots of potential here, um, great chief fill-ins for you for um, to go along to try to get the pitching in and, and like the St. Louis or uh, Philly bats that you might want. Detroit at uh, the White Sox, Reese Olsen is a highly toted prospect, but he struggled a little bit in the um, AAA as he's played. So White Sox have really having a down season here, but starting to put it together recently. So uh, I wouldn't play Olsen. And then Clevenger coming back from an injury also looked good in his rehab starts. Even if he goes five innings, I think there's enough strikeouts and um, and potential to dominate against this Detroit lineup that he's definitely solidly in play in the cheap range here at 6'6". And in GPP, I have no problem playing him as my SP2. Uh, Detroit, they even lost a bat because Green heard it has a leg injury, might be out long term. So bad dude is probably going to move up to hit in his spot. So Really, nobody like completely scares me in this Detroit lineup against Clevenger. And then Anderson, uh, Ben Tandy, I guess, okay. Ro- Roberts Jimenez has been back and been okay. Uh, 4K is a little high price for him. So I think these White Sox and bats, um, you know, definitely if you want to go with a, a cheaper primary stack against Olsen, the Detroit bullpen would definitely be in in play here in in a GPP. I don't know if they necessarily would want the White Sox as my primary cash lineup, but uh, they have a four, six, seven total. And I think that they'd definitely be able to um, have a decent evening tonight. And then Detroit, if you just are looking for another cheap um, villains, they are super cheap here. Uh, I think the most expensive guys buy us at 4 4, and everybody else is pretty much in the 2K range. You can pretty much play the whole team for a song. Another uh, decent matchup here the Braves and Diamondbacks. The Diamondbacks have just been on fire recently. Um, had a nice comeback win yesterday. <clears throat> Morton and Kelly, both decent pitchers. Morton just really doesn't get the strikeouts anymore. He's just like a really good veteran pitcher, and 7 8, I think, is the perfect price for him. He's going to get you points, but not a ton of points. Probably you know, looking at 12 to 15 DK points at 7 8. I mean, that's decent. But Arizona has a lot of upside with their offense, and it's in Arizona, and it's probably hot. So I don't know if there's open or closed, but that can, you know, we used to call this field course light because the ball traveled a little bit further. And Merrill Kelly has had some astral performances too. And I think <clears throat> he's just. At, as um, evenly matched with Morton here, but he's up against a really, really good to elite offense. So we'll just have to see what happens there. So both pitchers um, are in play if you're multi-entering, but I don't think I have much interest in either one. Same thing with the offenses. I think they're the top two GBP ones here because, again, Atlanta has really been a great offense and Kelly has struggled at times. And we've really seen um, Arizona put up some runs uh recently and i think Marte's got like a six or seven game hitting streak and carol's been hitting and stealing bases and you just just this whole team has just been so solid um i hope they make the playoffs and we see you know i don't think they're gonna win it but uh kind of like seattle had a really young team last year it kind of put it together and they made it to the um league championship series and took you know houston um you know, give them all they could. You they end up losing and not making it. I just hope Arizona maybe can make a decent run this year. It'd be fun to see. Uh, next up, Chicago Cubs and San Diego Padres. 
James Tyon and Michael Waka. Gonna be a little bit cooler in San Diego here, only 62 degrees versus some of these other ones that are in the 80s and 90s for hitting. But Tyon is definitely a no for me. Waka, I do have some interest in at 7 4. He's been solid the last couple starts. He's going deep in the games. Doesn't get a ton of strikeouts, but gets enough done just to kind of stuff the, like in, in basketball, sometimes the guys go out there and they're not going to score like a million points or, or do a ton in, in one area, but just does enough overall just to stuff the box score to um, get you the number you want to make value. And I think Walk is that type of pitcher here. It's very safe, has a decent floor in this matchup against the Cubs. So I think I'll be playing he and Gray as like some SP2s uh, tonight to try to save some money to get up to the pitchers and the bats I want. Uh, Cubs would only be like 150 max. Not super excited about them, but San Diego is my third favorite stack on the slate here. Like Tatis has just been on fire. Cornworth probably lead off Soto. Uh, Odor has actually been decent. Carpenter should be back in the lineup. And Gary Sanchez, like what happened here? He was <clears throat> a breakout star with the Yankees and then couldn't handle New York City and just like faded away. So he got either cut or traded i forget what happened but he ended up on the twins didn't really nothing there ended up on the mets they called him back up and realized that they had too many catchers they had nito they have alvarez who's an absolute um beast and um i think there's another guy in the in the pipeline too that's coming back for injuries so he came back didn't do anything they caught him it goes out to san diego and like just is starting to hit home runs and hit for power and stuff so at three three he's definitely in um intriguing on this uh slate here as a catcher if you're willing to pay up that much for him it's not too bad so uh it's definitely somebody to consider for your san diego stack so love the padres here like walk uh, a lot um cubs and not really touching the pitcher or the bats tonight yankees and dodgers severino versus kershaw severino i just don't like this matchup against the dodgers uh just too much any lefties that can hurt them here but it's both sides well freeman uh will smith can actually hit righties um decently uh muncie's a lefty jd martinez has been really good form recently haywood's hit a lot of more home runs than he has recently against righties so i uh, it's just not interested in severino kershaw on the other side i know this is a tough matchup you're gonna get uh, probably rizzo back in the lineup probably standing back in the lineup probably donaldson back in the lineup I don't know how their timing is or like how they're doing. Uh, Stanton strikes out a lot. Donaldson can also. So I think this actually maybe increases the strikeout potential for the Yankees. So I like Kershaw definitely in, in GPPs here. And at 9K is another decent pivot off of the higher price Otani and Veldez. And maybe a pivot off of Weaver too with maybe a little bit more um, K potential. Then Weaver has in this matchup. Weaver obviously has the better matchup because the Yankees, but the Yankees are on the road here, had to travel. Uh, so we'll just have to see what happens with um, these guys back in the lineup and if they can start clicking or not. So uh, the Yankees are just going to be a leverage stack for me. And the Dodgers, I think, you know, can be definitely be a GPP stack here behind Arizona and Atlanta. Uh Final game we have is Baltimore and San Francisco, Kremer and Logan Webb. Kremer has been giving up a lot of hard contact, so really like San Francisco. Uh, Luan, Wade should be leading off. Sabo should be in the second spot unless uh, Conforto's back. If Conforto's back, then, you know, he's definitely in play. J.D. Davis is a reverse splits hitter. It's definitely better reverse righties than lefties. Uh, Yastrzemski, um and they are so cheap here. Nobody is over 4K. 3-1, 3-4, 3-9, 3-5. I know they sometimes are pinch hit risk, but if they get enough, if they put up enough runs here against Kremer and get off to the races in the early innings, it doesn't matter. You, you've got as much as you need out of them. They're going to make value at their price. Orioles, I think, against Webb here. Webb's a decent pitcher, and I think he's in play, but at, at 9-7, kind of price in no man's land. Like, a, a couple hundred more, and you have Otani or Valdez. You get a couple hundred less, you get Wheeler or Kershaw in better matchups. And I think Baltimore is definitely in play. They'll probably have a stack of them against Webb in um, a GVP here. And then, like I said, San Francisco, absolutely favorite cheap stack here. Um, can fill in and make anything work. And you might be able to go like a San Francisco, Kansas City stack at bat wise and a GVP and play like, you know, both Otani and Valdez and hope that it's like the ultimate pitching duel and there's a ton of strikeouts or like maybe Otani Wheeler, Valdez Wheeler, like just play around with the two uh, high price pitchers, get your um, 
and hope that it's a low scoring night across the board. And then, you know, and Kansas City and San Francisco put up some runs and then you're all set. So just a thought here. But let's look at the actual builds that we have. And again, so many different choices, but here's where I'm going. I am taking Wheeler as my SP1. For my SP2, again, probably going to consider like Gray, Waka, Clevenger's more of a GPP play. Or like if I get it up to him, like Verlander over Ober, Savali, um, you know, I, I don't think I'm going Kelly and Cash. So for I'm taking Kansas City and St. Louis, you know, Team Missouri here. Uh have uh Perez, Goldsmith, Gorman, uh third base. So we'll just have to see. There's usually a cheap guy that um from Kansas City that bats there. They have a righty and a lefty. It depends on who they throw out there. It's probably going to be um I like maybe Garcia or Lopez, like one of the two of them. If not, maybe the cheapest one off I can find. Uh, or you know, if I go with a cheap enough SP2, I can probably get Arenado in there. So Witt and Melendez, and then in the outfield, like Newt Bar, if he's gonna be in, Jordan Walker at three three is decent. Uh, or I might fill in with like some more if Prado's like leading off at, at 3K for Kansas City, you might throw him in there. So for uh, FanDuel, again, it's only a $100 difference between Wheeler and Otani. Probably going to lean Otani in this one, but Wheeler's still in. So I'm going to take Perez or Pascotino. Probably going to have to go with Pascotino because Perez is hard to get these Wheeler or Otani in. Gorman, third base again. Um, Arenado or one of the Kansas City punts. With Newbar Walker again, Walker's um, minimum price of you only need bat eight, but you know if he just gets one hit at two K, then that's all I really need here. Melendez, and I'm pretty much going to try to stack four four St. Louis, um, Kansas City, depending on how the lineups come out, and then Wheeler or Otani is my SP one. For GPPs, we have Kershaw, and again, <clears throat> probably going to take a shot on Clevenger as my SP two, um, or or somebody cheap in that aspect. Uh, for a catcher, I'm going to go with Bailey or Gary Sanchez, um, because my stack is going to be San Diego and San Francisco, uh, Wade Jr. Cornerworth are the priorities there. Third base, like I said, Davis works in there, or, um, you might, if you have to take a one off short stop, if you can get up to Xander Bogart, you might have to take a one off there to make this, um, work. I wouldn't take Crawford for San Francisco. It really hasn't been great. And then outfield Soto and Tatis are my priorities. And then whatever San Francisco guy I have money left for. So your scrumsky would probably be my choice, but Sabo, if he's, um, you know, in hitting up in the second spot, it's fine. Um, you know, just have to see who else is, is in the lineup, but that's how I'm going to probably round that out. FanDuel Josiah Gray from Texas is going to be my, um, choice for just make sure I pick the right gray here. Cause there are two of them on the slate. Yeah. John Gray. Um, so not taking the Washington Josiah Gray. So let me just clarify that one. This is going to be gray. Texas. Uh, Wade Jr., Cronenworth, same thing. Tatis Soto, Yastrzemski, I'm building with San Diego. And then I end up with a San Diego choice in my utility, and it's hard because it was like Gary Sanchez is a good choice. And, you know, we've seen uh, Odor been good recently. And then also, you know, we've also seen a carpenter hit well against righty so you know that was probably the toughest choice is how to finish up my lineup because i ended up with the san francisco guy in or the san diego guy in the utility so there's a lot here um hopefully that helped and didn't confuse the living daylights out of you but if you have any questions put them in the chat below hit me up at megaro 31 on twitter and if these videos help you as always please like subscribe to our channel so you know when the videos are coming out and um you know share with your friends and i could just thankful, you know, the last week we've actually grown by several subscribers to our, our video and several um, watches. So really appreciate um, spreading the word and, and doing that for us. Um, hopefully we're helping you and that's just helping us back so much. So uh, if you want more information on FSI DFS, you can go to the description of the video and that's how to sign up for all our packages. And um, I just hope that you're staying cool if you're in these areas that are having extreme heat. I uh, hope you have a great weekend. Good luck in your contests, and I will see you next time.